Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Mike Ashew. I'm a philosophy instructor, senior lecturer at the University of Vermont. And uh, this event is the last event in a week-long event called uh, Public Philosophy Week, which is the brainchild of Tyler Doggett, my colleague in the philosophy department. So for the past week, all around Burlington, there have been these public discussions. And the idea is to have a kind of low-key, informal conversation around a, a host of philosophical topics from education, democracy, uh, philosophy of art. There was a presentation on stoicism. And so uh, where the idea is to have informal kind of conversations around a variety of topics. So, uh, so three years, was it three years ago we were here? Yeah, no, I remember. We had a talk here on the philosophy of wine, and it was uh, an incredible storm that took down all sorts of trees and stuff. And all the chairs were yeah. blowing up against the glass, and all the power went out, and we all sat around and went, now what? So we continued. So that, that happens again. We'll continue. Uh, so uh, my, uh, the topic I chose to, uh, to Present on that I've been thinking a lot about. Um, I am chair of the select board in Shelburne, um, and so this is an interesting opportunity um, for me to bring two kind of areas of my life together: philosophy and um, civic engagement. And why do people get involved in local politics? Why do people get involved in their community in this way? Um, I've had lots of kind of philosophical issues perk up, you know, kind of bubble up at the top. Things about, you know, who am I representing when I make a decision here? You know, what does it mean to talk about what's best for Shelburne? Am I, am I just here to do what everybody wants me to do? You know, should I call all the people I know and say, like, what do you think? Should I, am I here to exercise my own judgment? So I have a lot of these, like, kind of interesting, well, to me, Curious, it's going to be interesting to other people. Um, questions about, like, you know, what does it mean to get involved in civic um, stuff? And so when I think about this, um, I think about municipal, local, community sort of politics and, and uh, getting involved in the community in a variety of ways. But of course, I proposed this topic, and, and then I said to my, what does civic actually mean? I don't even know what I'm asking you. So I went and looked this up and did a little research. There's a long tradition of thinking about the role of the citizen, qua citizen, the person who's engaged in their community and in their local uh, um, education design to kind of facilitate municipal government, but local government, but also you know, sort of federal government. So a lot of thinking about why people should get involved or whether they even should. Um, you know, so there's a strain of thought that says only uh, public servants need to themselves with being involved in the community. I don't think that's really a model we, um, we think about today. So I have all these questions about this, and I thought I would share them and ask people why. Uh, number one, you know, I mean, there are times when I literally say, why am I doing this? <laughs> I think we all have that experience where you recognize you're making a sometimes a really kind of crazy sacrifice. Um, you're putting yourself at risk of being publicly chastised and scrutinized, you're putting yourself at risk of making errors. Um, you know, what if you make a decision on behalf of the town and it's a really, really bad one? Are you going to get land wasted publicly? You know? So there's a lot of it to like, why would you put yourself in that position um, to, to be criticized uh, when, you, when you think anyway you're trying to be helpful? Um, so I have all these questions um, that I wondered about. You know, I also wonder about what does it mean to um, but I, I wanted to start with why do it? Why put yourself out in the public and at uh, sort of uh, a risk of being criticized or um, risk of, of you know being publicly sort of uh, you know scrutinized? Or why do it anyway? Is it a hobby? Uh, is it a skill? Is it a passion? Is it a duty? Do you feel like you have an obligation? So why do people get involved in community politics? So I'm just going to propose all of you, I have a lot of them. And go right now, I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm going to ask questions and see what people think. So the first one is, why? Why do people get involved? 
in, uh, in their community in terms of civic engagement? What's the, what's the reason that people do this, um, if anybody wants to share? So I'm curious. Yes, <laughs> Judy. Well, because it's way more interesting to be engaged than to be a bystander. So for it's, one thing. It's, it's exciting. You mean it's caught, you mean like mentally sort of interesting to be involved? It's enjoyable? I don't know about enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it seems that being a bystander is being passive yeah. and being engaged is taking part and trying to be an aid of good results, but also just being engaged with other people in your community. Yeah, good. So uh, I often find that the problems or the issues are just interesting, kind of like puzzles sometimes. Like here's an interesting kind of, how do we think about this? And so I. Uh, that sounded like part of what you were saying. It's sort of just interesting challenges. Uh, but the agency thing for me too, you know, one of the reasons I've gotten involved is because of my frustration with national politics and feeling you know, like a useless individual. Like how can I make a difference in the world? So hey, I can, I can demonstrate some agency here. So Andrew, and Andrew, you were gonna. I was gonna say for me, it's like my parents did it. Um, you know, so there's a little sense of like, my mom was on the library board, my dad volunteered coach, you know, all the new sports, and that was kind of my entry into it. And then I grew up as a faculty brat, as they called me at a prep school, and the motto of school was, was Latin, but in English it was basically not to be served, but to serve. And there was this sort of philosophy of like, okay, you've got privilege, but you need to do something with it. You know, and growing up there and kind of hearing that and doing it, it's just always been something that's been instilled in me. Is that so, wherever I go, I get involved in something in that community. Is it uh, one of the things I was looking at in history is this notion that it's a duty of a citizen to involve themselves in local governance in some way? Is that how you feel? Yeah, and I, I would echo what Judy said, right? I'd much rather be an active participant than sit on the sidelines and bitch and moan. Yeah. You know, like as a coach in sports, you see all these people sitting on the sidelines yelling at the refs, yelling at the coaches. It's like, hey, we, we need refs, you want to volunteer. Right. You know, so it's that same idea of like, I'm putting my money where my mouth is, I'm gonna yeah. jump in there versus sit and complain. That's the so, that's yeah, cow cowardly, cowardly role, I think. Are you not gonna be complaining? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, I've just learned that in terms of when I coach or when I'm a parent, of, you know, it doesn't add any value, you know. So you can figure out ways to add value. Yeah. And so for me, in terms of volunteering, that's it. Yeah. Um, it seems like there's so many ways to answer this question. I mean, I think it sometimes it's a passion around a particular issue that you want to help um, affect change, and sometimes it's more personal about just wanting something stimulating in your life and having a sense of belonging to your community. Uh -huh. yep. Um, yep. I mean, I'm amazed, I've been thinking a lot about this since this came up, that people like you who have young families and are working, as opposed to us who are retired, I, I was so wrapped up in my work during the time I was work, I never, I had very little time for other things. So. When retirement came around, it was like, okay, so now I have time. Yeah. What are the things I want to do? Yeah. Um, so I, I find it really interesting when I see people like you, and I, I can see other people who who are able to give and still manage the rest of their day-to-day -day lives. <laughs> yeah. All my wife questions in the yeah, right. <laughs> Civic ways, the Rotary Club, the 
the various civic organizations. So I encourage everybody. But part of me wonders, like, maybe it's really not for everybody. Uh, there are some people that don't necessarily bring good skill sets. So in the history of thinking about this, there were sort of the public servant, the person who dedicated their time and their efforts to their community. I don't think we think that today. I think we think everybody should be involved, regardless. But then the question is, like, you know, not everybody. I mean, I don't know what to say about it. I don't want to say to everybody. You, if I went down the list of all the people in children and said, you, 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 like, then we'd have everybody doing everything, which would be great in a way. But I don't think it, it, um, it is for everybody. I think that there are people who are drawn to it. I think there are people who are better at it than others. Um, so I don't know if everybody, so this is one of the things, you know, should everybody feel a duty or an obligation to participate in civic life? Are they doing something wrong if they say, I'm just going to raise my kids, golf on the weekends? I know a lot of people like this in Sheldon, right? They, I mean, I talk to people in the gym, and it's like, you know, we just passed a local option tax. What's that? It's a little like, what? You don't know? The, you don't know? Did you vote? No? <laughs> like, was there an election? It's like, no, you don't even know? So, you know, a lot of people are very happy. And I can't blame them. They have their lives. They, you know, maybe that's fine. So should everybody? Because you sort of made it sound like it was great that I was doing what everybody should be doing. Well, I don't think it should. Um, yeah. That, yeah. Really don't. I think there are different ways of doing your civic duty, and some of that could be just being a good person and raising good kids yeah. and doing well at your job. Yeah. You know, you know, my job happened to be in education, so I felt like I was serving the community right. in that. Yeah. And so I don't think I see no judgment in it. Okay, good. Yeah, people have different skill sets, as they said. Yeah, good. Yeah, CJ. Yeah, I think that um, the, the way that I see answer that question is that enough people should be involved that it feels accessible to be involved and that people feel like they have someone to go to who they can say, if I want to get involved in this, I'm going to do it this way. And this is how I do it. And I think that the government is so convoluted that you need the common person. You need your neighbor to be doing something. You need someone in the community to be yeah. doing something so that you feel like you can be doing something. <laughs> um, an anecdote I can give is that um, my dad, who I live in New Jersey, my dad was part of the New Jersey Historic Committee. But definitely in, in the select board, there's a tendency, I can understand this, let's, let's think about it longer, let's think of, let's do another study, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's scope out another, you know, because everybody is concerned that they're going to make a mistake. I think a lot of people are worried that they're going to make mess something up. So there's a lot of risk aversion, which is understandable. You're a steward of other people's resources and you don't, but, but anyway, but there's also a lot of entry, and people are sort of change resistant, so it's interesting. It is, it is also partly frustrating because, I mean, if anybody that's been on a committee knows, you can spend a lot of time talking and kind of going around and around over stuff, so you know, there are some costs to it. Too. Well, as one of our colleagues said to me as I joined, that you know, every decision we make, we piss off about 10% of the town. So after 10 decisions, you pissed off the whole town. <laughs> This idea that I have a duty. So duty stands sort of grates on some years. So I just mean, do you feel like you are you have some and, and if I say obligation, people kind of do the same thing. Do people have an obligation or a duty to involve themselves in civic life? In the life of their community or in the life of their municipal government? Yeah. Uh, well <coughs> yes, civic Engagement, which is what you're talking about here, I think is a um, is a is a very broad. Concept. Yeah, yeah. I do not believe that everyone has an obligation to become involved in 
government, per se. Yeah. But I, mean, I do believe that everyone has a responsibility to contribute in some way to making the community stronger. Yeah. Whether it's through coaching or through teaching or through nursing or through being involved in government. Yeah. As opposed to just taking. Yeah. Do you think voting is enough if the person I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's important, but I don't think so. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 I, I think you have to have some sort of a, a vision of where you are and what you'd like it to be. And, and you may decide at that point in time, yes, I want to be, I want to see if I can make a little bit of a positive difference or something where the direction I'd like to see something to go yeah. go into. But if you don't have that kind of, I guess, idea somewhere, at least in the back of your mind, it, it's probably not something for you. you know? I, I think, I think it, it may not be the majority of the people that feel like that, in fact. What about people that get involved? Somebody mentioned this for, uh, maybe for a single issue or maybe uh, or a, a specific issue topic. I, you know, that has the positives and negatives. I mean, you know, sometimes a single issue kind of tunnel, tunnel vision can be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can be you know, a detriment rather than a, a positive. But I, I think a lot of people do start involvement in, in, uh, in government and in some kind of quasi-government uh, organization. Yeah. Because this is a particular issue, I think this should be such and such from my So And I like to get it there. One, uh, oh, yeah. Like that, uh, as I see it, there's a threshold, and you know, uh, if you have uh, a passion, you know, maybe engage or have something occur here, you get involved. If you don't care, you know, just living a life that's just fine. Yeah. If you have a technical skill, that a uh, profession, and you can make a contribution. Well, that's something that probably puts you over that threshold to get involved. Kind of like what's the doctor in Hippocratic Creed. Yeah. You, know, you if you can help, there is not necessarily an obligation okay. or a duty, but there's certainly a push. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you wanted to say you ought to, but you were refraining from that. Um, <laughs> Like, if you have a skill and you could be helpful to yeah. your community, it's, it would be nice of you to do it, or you want to do it? Again, that's the threshold. Okay. Do you want to uh, engage? Okay. Do you want to be part of that process? Okay. If you have that skill set, then you, you are unless you're qualified, but you have something to contribute. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's one of the motivators to get over that threshold of, you know, kind of not wanting to um, engage. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Because it, as you mentioned at the outset, there, there's a risk in that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, going off that, I feel like each person comes in with a certain set of values and things that they care about. And each person can find, if they look for it, the thing that they're really passionate about. and. It's really likely that since, uh, as someone said before, that uh, civic engagement is a pretty broad subject, that you can find something that fits, even if it's not necessarily in your immediate community, even if it's something like regional or even national, like if it was national, like it could affect a bunch of different communities, including your own. Yeah. And once you find that thing that you're really passionate about, then once you like fully commit to that, I guess, that can bring a lot of enjoyment. So it's, I would say it's a recommendation to be involved in civic engagement in some way, rather than not wanting to, yeah, to live, like, well, I guess. Okay. Or to, yeah. 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 It occurs to me that, that we're pretty damn privileged just to even be having this conversation yeah. about this. I, there are, so many people in our world, in our community, who are functioning at a survival level, uh, who, are, who have no capacity, given the demands that surround them, of thinking about this at all. 
Uh, and so I think we, we do have to acknowledge No, that. absolutely. I think that's really important. Yeah, it is. I'm constantly aware in Shelburne of how our privilege and our demo demographics, I mean, we have a lot of community involvement, and a lot of it is a function of demographic and privilege, mm -hmm. that people have the luxury to be able to do that, you know. Um, I agree, you know, and it's worth thinking about that. Um, yeah, see? Yeah, I think I'm saying what we should think, too. I think that um, it does us all a disservice to, like, like for example, I'm obviously most involved in government as far as gay rights. And the reason is because I don't have time to be involved with everything else, and I have gay rights are very important. Um, <laughs> and, um, I think that, like, that's a lot of people where they don't have the time and all the energy to put the effort unless the issue is directly making their quality of life worse. Yeah. And
And you know, it's also sort of um, interesting volunteering versus being in sort of these quasi-volunteer, quasi-paid, like our emergency uh, responders are given a stipend. Uh, but they're clearly doing this. I mean, they're not doing it for the money, that's for sure. They're doing it because they love being community-oriented. Um, so, you know, that's interesting, too, when you get these, uh, these groups of people who, I mean, our chief of our fire, I mean, our rescue department, Jacob Leopold, is like, incredibly committed to providing the best um, emergency response services he can. It's sort of like a, clearly like a motivation for him to be this community type of oriented person. So, you know, and then trying to figure out how to draw on that and draw those. Yeah, Lee, sorry. Uh, no, this is great. Uh, so, I was thinking there are many ways to participate in the community, and I think it's participation more than serving. Uh -huh. That's crucial. The people who are elected, you clearly are serving. And the people who are serving committees are serving. Uh, to me, what's most important is for everyone in the community to feel I'm part of this community and I have an obligation as part of this community to participate. Participating in many ways, uh, but for what? Which includes being informed about what's going on around you and what the issues are, and learning about it. And whether you weigh in or not, if you're happy, fine, if not. But if you're not informed, and you're only thinking about, I'll just, you know, let them do their things, let them do their things, but before you know it, it's gonna hit me, and it's gonna hit my neighborhood, and, and across the street from me, there's gonna be something that I didn't know could happen, even though if they participated early on, they would have known. Yeah. And so how do you get people to participate? How do you get people to vote? At town meeting, 20% of the people voted. 20%. Yeah. Now that's not community involvement, community participation, community engagement. And how we and the select board can do this on its own, how the community can somehow understand if I'm not involved, I can't complain. Yeah, they, they don't get that. <laughs> Just what I said. And, and so it's this kind of uh, enlightened, rational self-interest view 
that we get together in community to work on things because we see it in our best interest, but we also see it as in the interest of everybody, that we realize we're all sort of engaged in this collective project and to make a better community. So it's not like you have a, a familial relationship, a close affectionate relationship. What you have is like this relationship of respect of the rational agents kind of figuring out like how can I make my community better. Uh, yeah. I feel like a lot of obligation in a certain sense of mutual like reciprocity. So you're getting something out of the community and so you have an obligation to contribute to it in some way. Uh -huh. But I think there are a lot of people who aren't don't have that like two way relationship with the society that they're part of. And so then I wonder the do people who aren't being served in a society of an obligation. Yeah, yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do the people that are being served have obligations to those who aren't, right? So what are our obligations to the people who can participate um, for the reasons you've said? Or what are our, you know, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Do you have an answer to those things? I mean, I think, I don't think you necessarily have an obligation in the sense to make society better for people who aren't putting in, like, trying to make you understood. But I do think that there is like a rational self-interest there where maybe you do want to get involved to try and make a society that does just Yeah. Do you think you do you but I can't tell if you think you ought to or if it would just be nice if you did, if you had the time and you know. I mean I don't think there's any obligation there. Okay. Is that oftentimes, I would say oftentimes the best change comes from those who are outsiders and right. fight to become insiders, right? right? So if you don't feel like you have an obligation, you're never going to get it, you know, whether it's civil rights, gay rights, you know, people that are other than fight their way in. So but I think feel like you're fighting your way in because you feel you have an obligation to other people who aren't being served. But I feel like in the case Or you see that your society is imperfect and you want to make it better. Yeah, but I feel like then it's still an obligation maybe are in the same position as you. Yeah. They're not necessarily an obligation to society as a whole. Really? You don't, you don't think you have an obligation to society as a whole? I, I, when I say that, I think when, when I see people who are being served by the government, I feel like I have a certain duty to talk to them about why they're not served by the government and have conversations with them about how they feel that they need to like, have that conversation with them about what, what is the structural change that would make them feel represented. Mm -hmm. and because I, I think we elected an entire block Congress. I would argue that maybe with the structure of the United States, black people still would yeah. And I think that we have a, um, a, a, it's necessary for us to talk to people who are being structurally represented and ask them and why don't they feel structurally represented. So you're talking about justice, right? right. And, and achieving justice in your community. That, I think that's definitely one of the things, one of the, the things that we should be doing, right? Um, ensuring a just and a fair community where people are, um, are treated fairly. But, but, I'm, but I'm also wondering whether it's not just talking to them about how they're not being served, but inviting them in ways, like making room for them to participate. Yeah. Because I don't think there's always that avenue for people to, to or that they even know how to come in. Right. Like I've been on some boards who purposely want representation from the people that they're serving. Um, and so that's a very concerted effort to say, we need to make space and we need to actually invite and hold some hands and bring people in. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's so, yeah I was thinking what you said is that, and what CJ said is that. Um, Could you speak of, I'm sorry, really? Yeah, I'm mean, just spinning off of what you both just said, what CJ said, and what um, you said over there is that, and I think I was kind of touching on that earlier, was that we have this, it's almost like a judgment of that you're not, um, you're not participating. But if you are within a framework that isn't getting served, or you are working so hard to just make your ends you know, meet and yeah. get your life to be a place where you can eat and you can sleep and shelter, you aren't engaging in the community because you don't have the bandwidth to do that. And right. it's our, the people that do have that bandwidth, to come to them. Like, you can't say that they're not participating because they are. Right. So how do we out and make sure that they are having a voice, that they are having representation, that they are having time 
then they are having their needs met, even if that means as a community member that you say, oh, we're going to wash your children so you can come the time that you need it, yeah. or I will cook your dinner for you. I mean, these are simple ways that you can engage in your community as well to make sure that those people that don't have the resources, the time, or the benefit to attend. So uh, I, this uh, made me think of, there's this um, philosopher named W.D. Ross. This is a concept people are probably familiar with. He imagines our sort of who we are most obligated to or who we ought to be concerned most about is kind of series of concentric circles. So you have your family, your immediate family, then maybe your neighbor, cousins, um, distant family, then maybe your neighbors, then maybe your community, and then sort of your nation. And, and then you can think like, yeah, if you have a lot, if you have, don't have limited time, you got to hit the inside circles and sort of work your way out, right? Once you care for the people closest to you, you care for the, you know, then you can kind of start working your way out. Do you, do you think that's true? So if you have limited time, should you, should you dole out your time? I mean, if you're really swamped and you're, you're trying to keep, you know, bread on the table, should you give 10 minutes a month? <laughs> because that's, or should you say, no, I gotta deal with my family, my kids, my my relatives, the people that I are closest to me. I think they don't even have the opportunity to work on their inner circle in that same way yeah. to push out the further needs of how their community can serve their circle yeah. because they don't have the family. Yeah, right. so, uh, so they need help. Yes, yeah, so and they need yeah. help, but they don't even have that same vision because they're just yeah. dedicated with their own. You can't even look outside that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Gail. Yeah, I, I think it, it's a matter of engagement. And um, for myself, I've always found myself somewhere because I was already there, uh -huh. thinking about what's important to me to see better in the world or whatever. And so when I worked at EVM and, and I worked with students who were in service learning, I used to say, I've had a horizontal career ladder because even in my career, I was moving from thing to thing because I was already there. And sometimes I got jobs because I was invited to take a job that I didn't know was happening. Yeah. And um, what I've ended up spending most of my last years on recently all began because when I was pretty young, I read a book called Reading the Woods. And it helped me understand the environment in some way, even though I had no background in that. Um, but I've always sort of had this internal sense of doing something that seemed like it was important. And I don't know that it was necessarily important to me, but it just aroused a passion yeah. to be engaged in that particular thing. In, in environmental issues? Not necessarily that. I mean, at one point, Fushka was banging his, his shoe on the table at, at the UN, and I said, we got to But are you saying this is um, often civic-minded and your passion brought you to issues that were um, um, important to you in the community? Um, I think they came at different times depending on where I was in my life. Yeah. And um, I've also had the benefit of having times when I needed something and people who I never knew were there reached out and yeah. they really that really struck something in me that I think stuck with me because I think you need to reach out and you need to have your eyes open and see what's happening around you and act on it. Yeah. Yeah. For, your, for your own personal growth as well as for what it can do for the person next to you. Yeah. Not an obligation, it's just a fulfillment. Yeah, so it's, yeah, I see. Yeah. What about, uh, yes? I'll just kind of say, I mean, I'm sort of way back. How do we even define civic? Like, what do you mean to do? I don't know. I'm exactly. still wrestling with this. Yeah, it's like I'm not quite sure. Because part of it is it's something that has changed in different periods, what it means. So uh, the idea that, uh, that, I don't know, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think most people associate being involved in the community with being involved in their local government or even their state government. I think people find other ways to be 
but it is definitely the community, civic means, you know, from civilization, and, and you know, the whole root of the word is community, right? But, but there have been periods where it's been focused on local government, or even more local, uh, national, or state level, or more regional, let's say. Um, and sometimes it's not at all. I think we live in an age where there are many, many ways to be civically engaged, and it's not necessarily in terms of a local government. Uh, but I do think that local government and being involved in local municipal operations generally is a different kind of civic engagement. It's just a different, it's a very interesting kind of, uh, I sometimes want to say to young kids, like, if you want all this stuff that you had to happen, move to a community, get on the local committee boards and commissions, because as Andrew knows, we I've run out of post twice, you know? I mean, people don't, um, people, you know, people that do it want to do it. Um, and people want to do it for a variety of reasons. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it is, uh, you know, and then people have all their other sort of civic um, goals and things they want to do. So I just think it's a it's a different kind of involvement in the community. It's, it's not what it used to be. Uh, I think that's partly sort of the moment we're in. I think there's been a real decline in interest in local um, government. But the, it's also that there's all these other competing forms in which you can be involved in your community. And people enjoy those too. So, um, so yeah, I don't, I don't really know what to make of it. Yeah, I do. There's a decline in participation in civic in government um, have anything to do with the decline in educating students about Good. Yeah, that's civics, for God's sake? Right, that's the other interesting issue about this whole tradition of civic engagement is education was key and has always been key. In fact, I have this quote that I thought was sort of interesting from uh, Tocqueville. Town meetings are to liberty what primary schools are to science. They bring it within the people's reach. They teach men how to use and how to enjoy it. So he's saying, like, you know, civic uh, government is how we teach people how to be autonomous, free individuals involved in their, it's a whole, it's education. And we should be educating, and we do. We educate our kids in voting and in, in being involved in, in, you know, all sorts of uh, public um, activities that support the community. So there was this very, there's obviously a lot to be said about educating the youth. And you know, we have in town, we have um, high school, even now we have uh, 11th graders on our, um, I mean 11 year olds on our commissions and boards because we're trying to teach, like everybody should be, or you know, people should be involved in their community. So there's this very strong educational component where we're, it's almost like we're passing along a tradition. This is what you do, right? You manage your community, you take care of the community, you get involved in these things. Yeah. So, yeah. Like get involved in like civically, like has shifted a lot with social yeah. media. Also, I think there's not as much like emphasis I think on like being a part of your like local community when it's like pretty in, like like in your face a lot of the time. But there's all these things going on like, a lot farther away, yeah. um, and so I think it's shifted a lot to like petitions and. Go to protests. Uh, let, me, let me read you a quote. <laughs> as far this is a, this is from a historian. Uh, as far as evidence, as far back as evidence can be found, and virtually without exception, in every age, young adults seem to have been less attached to civic life than their parents or grandparents. <laughs> so what he's saying is, it also seems to be like a function of getting older. When you get older, you tend to get more involved. In these sorts of activities. Yeah, so I'm curious about that too. I, I'm, but see, I have, I have a little bit of a, uh, a uh, what do you call that? A bias? A uh, selection effect because I work with young students. <laughs> so they all seem to be pretty engaged, you know. Like, but I feel like they are more engaged than we ever were. Right? I think so. Too.
or it's a different ethos or a different attitude about, you know, like I agree, there are big issues that, that the younger, you know, your, your age group are dealing with. Yeah. And I don't remember, I, I remember some, I remember the first war in Iraq and coming sort of, I remember the Contra, I remember some political events, but they were sort of like that. Yeah. You know, so I do think the culture has changed and the way that people engage has changed.
I also think in, in a town like Shelburne, it is a function of wealth and, and demographics. We have a lot of time, and we have a lot of uh, ability to engage locally. So what, what does that mean about other you know, communities who don't, who don't have that? Yeah? Thank you. 
in our community, wherever that community is, what, at, what you know, the person next door or the person on the select board or you know the president of the United States, uh, we've lost civility. And I think uh, I don't know. I'm just going to leave. No, it. I agree. Sure. I, I I agree that that's. I think that's a really challenging. I didn't even bring this up because one of the issues is who counts, right? Who's in your Who's in your civic circle? So we're confronted with this problem in Shelburne because we have a, a housing for homeless. And these are people that come and aren't really, quote unquote, members of the community because they are members of the community, but they're transient. So do they count as, you know, people have asked me this, and people will say things like, they aren't real residents. And it's like, no, what does that mean, actually, real resident? Of course they're real residents. So, um, you know, who counts? I do think, you know, if somebody comes and stays in a hotel in Shelburne, it's like, welcome to Shelburne, welcome to my community, and I want you to be a part of it. And I do think I have a different attitude towards that person than I do to my, the people that I know live here and I've lived here a long time. Not that it's a better or worse, it's just like, I expect different things, I, I you know, I, I don't expect them to be up. A person staying in a local hotel, I don't think they should be up in the local shelter. In fact, I enjoy talking to them about it, but I don't feel like it's your duty, you know, to be in, uh, to be a, a, up to speed on what's happening in town. So it is interesting who counts, who counts as a community. Yeah. I was just going to say another little plug for Vermont local stuff is that you know I've been here I guess a dozen years, and the idea of a town meeting is pretty unique, right? Yeah. It's, there's not many other states that do that. Um, I kind of wish that as a town, you know, we had about 20 percent participation, right? I ran on a But the sort of disappointing at the town meeting, you know, granted it's hybrid now with Zoom, so there were lots of little disembodied squares on a screen, but, um, you know, in terms of the kids, like, I'm realizing, okay, the next couple years I'm going to bring my youngest son to every town meeting, so he understands that this is what it's about. He can see the citizens arguing, debating, raising their voice, being involved. You know, but it's pretty unique in America to have a thing where the whole town has a night where they get together. Yeah. I think one issue in Vermont is that you have, you know, November elections and then you have the town stuff in the March. And I think for people who are newer to Vermont, that's confusing. They miss that. They don't do things, you know, whether you could combine the two at the same time and have everybody involved. I don't know. I mean, I like having the two be separate. But just a plug for kind of civic participation as something that, as far as I can tell you, to this weird thing. Oh, no, I agree. We had a town meeting where people really came and you really got to vote on the issues and you got to vote on the ballot items and you got to vote on everything. Yeah, there was and no Australian ballot. It was there all was from no the floor. Ballot. And it made a real difference for how many people came to the meeting yeah. and how many people spoke up. And, when COVID, and I don't COVID understand COVID's people. impact versus just the yeah. decline over time. Yeah. But, you know, in those old meetings, the elders in town would stand up and they would talk about their history. and, and you just became engaged with with what what this town had been and what it could be. Yeah, right. And what is old is new. You know, like yeah. well, we've already talked about that here, here, and here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, as far as like on the, I, I think that's really cool from Vermont. I really appreciate the elementary part of us being here. Um, but kind of moving back to who gets to be involved. One of my favorite court cases to look at is um, there's a court case where the ACLU defended Nazis and their right to free speech in order to defend the right to free speech broadly throughout the US because if you say that Nazis can't be Nazis, then who's to say that I can't be? And when um, <laughs> Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs>
because right now it is on the internet. It is not human. Well, I do think what you brought up earlier also, we need to get civic education ramped up back in the schools again and opportunities for getting young people involved, even if it's not sort of your straightforward civic education, involved in, in, in government and civic opportunities. So, yeah, no, a lot of work. I, you know, I, I was very depressed about three years ago. <laughs> So uh, I think we should call it there. And thank you, everybody.